You want to be where they are, but you don't want their struggle. Yeah, I don't want their struggle. <laughs> Everyone, welcome back to me, myself, and Ife. It's Ife here, and today I'm going to be doing a very, like, honest, sobering talk about failure and disappointment because I feel like they seem like really scary words, and it's not great, not gonna lie, they're not great to experience, but it's sort of inevitable sometimes. And I'm just going to be talking about how I deal with this thing I don't want to deal with, basically. So, just to give some context behind this, I was just telling my friend how I feel really, like, odd about YouTube. I couldn't put my finger on what it was, but I felt very weird. And she was like, do you feel like you failed? And I was like, well, damn, you know, I did it before. <laughs> but now that you've said it, I do. Like, I do feel like I failed. Even though my goal wasn't to be a YouTuber, I feel like my personal YouTube growth in terms of editing and like video quality and how comfortable I feel has not matched the numbers. They've actually got it in the opposite direction and that is I guess a sort of failure and then she said I get why you feel weird because you're not someone that's like used to experiencing that or used to not getting what you want I tend to get what I want not because I'm spoiled just because I always go for what I want I always you know put effort in to get what I want so to be putting effort in and to not get what I want isn't great but then I deep sugar I'm 21 like it's no longer like we're no longer in the playground we're no longer in um, a place where you know life is easy life isn't easy and I am not the only youtuber out there realistically people aren't just gonna watch my videos because I want them to realistically it's just not that simple I'm titling this video dealing with failure slash disappointment because even if it's not failure there's still an aspect of me being disappointed I am generally a positive person but I feel like sometimes over optimism could actually lead to being naive and I could just see my friend if he's watching this nodding his head basically what I really feel is that to be successful and to get to where you want to be you are going to have to fail you are going to have to deal with disappointment because you will always know where you want to be and more times than not you're not going to be there more times than not even if you reach where you wanted to be five years ago you no longer want to be in that situation so more times than not you are going to have to deal with disappointment you are going to have to deal with people not seeing your like vision or people not seeing like what you see you are going to have to deal with that and I guess this video is just going to talk about how I deal slash I'm dealing with that and hopefully can help someone out there another thing my friend said was oh like listen to a von orgy life is hard act to sleep in their car that's all cool that is all very cool but that's not me but at the same time it's true like it's so easy to, you know, see people who are where you want to be and you hear it all the time. You want to be where they are, but you don't want their struggle. Yeah, I don't want their struggle. But hindsight is also a wonderful thing. Someone who is where they are and where they want to be now, them telling me about all the times that they had to struggle isn't necessarily going to help me when I'm in the struggle without being where they are. But to be honest, both are good. Like, at the end of the day, it is good to put things in a different perspective sometimes. Whether you make it to the other the side is all governed by how you act in the struggle whether you make it to the side where you can say oh yeah I'm here now but I had to struggle is what you do with the struggle are you looking at it as thinking okay cool I failed let me just stop and try something else sometimes that is good sometimes failure is an indicator that you're not doing the right thing but then you have to analyze the failure you have to ask yourself in what ways have you failed have you failed because you've taken seven months off and then in order to just get back to where you began that is me right now I took time out and I wanted to just go back to like you know the buzz where like I was putting things out every week I was putting videos out every week and I was excited and in that time I actually didn't really care about views or whatever because I knew like you know I was really doing what I wanted to do but then when you've taken a break out and then you've come back and then you put a video out and it hasn't done as well as past videos or it hasn't done as well as a video I could have potentially put out had I not taken this break because I would have built that momentum is that the reason you failed is the reason you failed because the reason you started was wrong your reason for wanting to do it was clout for example and that was your main driver that as a main driver is not sustainable so it's actually inevitable I personally do believe this if you're clout chasing one day you will hit like a halt you'll hit like a bump and you won't know where to go because you didn't have strong foundations in what you were doing so I say the first step is to just have a cry have a cry have a shout throw a fit 
and you're not where you want to be. Like, let all the emotions out. Do that. Do not keep them in. Do not hide under this false optimism of, yeah, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I'm started. Although that is true. But allow yourself to feel what you need to feel in that situation. Allow yourself to feel rage, anger at society. Blame whoever you want to blame. Let it all out. Because I find it very hard to see sense if I'm emotional. Like, sometimes I just need to cry to be able to see sense. And crying isn't always negative, in my opinion. I, I just think sometimes you let your emotions out as a laugh and other times you let your emotions out as a cry, as a scream, whatever. It's an emotional release. Do whatever you need to do to release that emotion. Step two is to go back to the drawing board and really analyse why you're in this situation. Is it because you were chasing the clout? Is it because you weren't consistent? Is it because you didn't really give it your all? Maybe you overbacked yourself. Maybe you were overconfident. Maybe you were underconfident. Why are you in that situation? Really sit time back, analyse it, go back to the drawing board. Because once you've done that, you can know where you're going to go from this failure or from this disappointment. Are you going to use the lessons you learned in this failure to start something else, to start a new venture knowing this? Continue the same venture with this and to not make the same mistakes before. Whatever the reasons that you come up with why you're in this situation is what's going to govern how you get out of it. It's what's going to govern your next steps. For me personally, what helps is remembering why I started it. What was the outcome that I wanted? The why basically. Why am I doing this? In fact, forget the why. It's, it's all five W's. It's the why, the where, the how, the blah, blah, blah. Where do I want to be? Why do I want to be there? And how do I want to get there? I really feel like if you answer those questions to yourself, honestly, like to yourself, only you can know that. But one other point I'd say is support. Had I not spoken to my friend and had I just kept it all in, I would just continue to be mad and mad and mad and I'll just be like, yo, F this, like why am I doing this? She helped me realise that whether it was failure or disappointment, it was something. I wasn't happy with where, with where I was and I guess sometimes it's not really nice to admit that to yourself, especially if you are the reason why you're there. But you know, sometimes at yourself, sometimes slap yourself, sometimes slap yourself but wait. <laughs> Throw water at yourself to wake yourself up and to open your eyes to reasons why you're in the situation and then that is really how I feel like you can get out of it. In conclusion, my three main steps would be release your emotion in whatever way you see fit, analyse the situation and then three, work out where you're going next. Are you starting again? Are you moving on to something else? Or are you just going to continue through the struggle? And four, don't be hesitant to ask for support once you've sorted like yourself out or sometimes you, sometimes the support comes at different stages. Sometimes the support comes before you've sorted yourself out. Sometimes you need to seek support after you've sorted yourself out. But remember to back yourself part. Like remember to think for yourself because sometimes people can't tell you why you're there. Only you know that sometimes and people can help you bring it out but they can't think for you, they're not in your brain. You can't be too pessimistic, you can't be too optimistic. I wouldn't even say be in the middle but I think that you know you've got to adjust it based on where you are or based on your situation or something. Sometimes you just need a little bit of a wake up call. I just think it's very important to not cry over spilt milk and I wrote a song when I was 16 and it was like, no point crying over spilt milk when ice cream tastes better anyway. It does taste better anyway. Now everyone's lactose intolerant so you know that, that whole line is just kind of a bit meh. But point is the milk has spilt. You can only change with how like quickly you wipe the milk off the ground. It would not be a video if I didn't have a dumb analogy. So I sounded smart. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's that. Go, go. <laughs> You are moist you, okay? I'm really just talking because the camera hasn't stopped yet. 